Hey, it's Vanessa, the Crafty Gemini, and this video is actually a video response to the Whitney Sews sewing tag that I saw on her channel, which I think she got from the Sewing for Christ YouTube channel, and so everybody's tagging each other and it's kind of going along in a line. And if you don't know what a sewing tag is, it's basically, I have a list here in front of me of 11 questions, and everybody that participates in the tag gets to answer the same 11 questions, and just gives another opportunity for your viewers to learn a little bit more about you and how you got started with sewing. So let's get started with my questions. The first one is how old were you when you started sewing? So I did do some hand sewing work back in the days in like sixth grade. I think we made a little pillow cover uh, with some scraps of fabric and we had to hand sew everything together. But I actually didn't start sewing on a sewing machine until I was 22 and in my second year of law school. I actually had been begging my mom since I was eight years old to let me or to teach me how to sew on a sewing machine. And she always refused because when she came to this country, she worked in some clothing factories in New York in the 60s. And she was so fast sewing on those industrial sewing machines that she actually used to sew her finger under the machine. Ouch, okay? And so as you can imagine, she was traumatized that that would happen to us. I'm one of four girls, so she didn't teach any of us how to sew because she was scared that, that would happen to us. So for years and years, ever since I was eight, I'd ask her every couple of years, please teach me to sew. And she'd keep saying, you know, I wasn't old enough or I couldn't, not yet. Until I was 22 and I told her mom, I promise I will keep my fingers away from the needle. I think I'm old enough now to know how to work the machine if you teach me, right? And so she did. Uh, she taught me how to thread the machine and how to sew straight stitches. And from there, I just took off. Second question is, what was your first machine? So my first sewing machine was when I was in law school, when my mom finally taught me how to sew, she picked up a vintage 1966 Singer zigzag sewing machine that she got at a yard sale for 10 bucks. And that's what I learned how to sew on. That was my first machine. Number three is, what was your first project? So when my mom showed up with that machine and she taught me how to sew straight lines, I immediately got a little bit bored as you can imagine and I didn't have any fabric in a stash or anything so I just went to my closet and pulled out an, a pair of designer jeans that were really expensive but I didn't uh, fit into them anymore and so I started cutting them up and I turned it into a denim purse out of those jeans so that was my first project number four is what was your hardest project that you made so the hardest project that I made would probably have to be the first queen size quilt that I made it was huge and I had to make the whole thing from start to finish. Um, if you're wondering, it wasn't for me. It was actually a custom order that I made for a customer who was giving it to her sister as a wedding present. And it was a huge quilt and it was made up of like 480 half square triangles or something crazy like that. And so it just, it's not that the project was difficult to make itself, but it was so time consuming and tedious. Um, I worked on it every single day for almost two months. And so that's how long it took me to make that quilt. At the end, <laughs> I wanted to keep it, but I couldn't because uh, it was a custom order that I made for the customer. But I'd have to say that that half square triangle queen size quilt was my hardest project just because of the amount of time that it took. Number five, what are the stores that you buy your sewing supplies from? Well, nowadays I don't really buy much stuff um, because as you can see behind me, I have a huge stash of fabric. This is just some of it. Um, I'm working on the video tour, guys. I'm not done with the room just yet with the studio. So once it's fully completed, I'll walk you around with the camera and show you the, the uh, tour of the entire studio. Um, but I do have tons of fabric. I have tons of supplies. And I actually didn't buy most of it. My mom loves to shop at thrift stores and garage sales, so she gets me a lot of the fabric that I have in my stash, scissors, pins, and things like that. Um, a lot of people from either estate sales or family members, they'll like give it to me. They're like, hey, I heard you sew. Here. And they'll give me like a box full of stuff. Um, I also check Craigslist all the time. A few years back when I was pregnant with my son, I was just like a Craigslist fanatic. And I found a lady who was moving and she had all these boxes in storage that she had to get rid of. So I have tons of like, and she gave them away for free. It's crazy. I have like eight boxes up there on the loft up top of the studio. I have like eight boxes of vintage sewing patterns, books, cross stitching, crocheting magazines, books. I mean, things from the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. It's insane. I still haven't even had a chance to go through everything. Um, but that's where I get my stuff from. So I, a lot of the things are thrift stores, yard sales, uh, mostly gifts. And if I do have to buy something, I'll either go to my local Joann's Fabric Store, which is the only big box sh shop that we have here in town, or um, we have one quilt shop that recently opened, so I've bought some stuff in there as well. 
and where else? And then of course on the internet, if I don't have, um, if they don't sell it where I need to get it here locally, then I'll just get online. If there's a sale that I find out about through a blog or through subscribing to a shop's newsletter, then I'll shop online as well. Um, what else? Let's see. Number six. What are one of the sewing pl uh, What are one of the sewing supplies that you collect? So now. I don't really collect anything. I mean, I have a lot of everything, but it's not that I go out to find it. Like right here, I have a ton of scissors, um, but I've just accumulated them over time. It's not that I necessarily collect them. But up until last year, I would have to have answered this question by saying that I collected sewing machines. Because last year, I had 11 sewing machines. <laughs> and then since we were expecting a new baby and moving to the farmhouse, my husband very nicely asked me to get rid of them. <laughs> we didn't have space at the other place for them. Um, and so I used to collect sewing machines. I had 11 of them. Um, now I don't have that many. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five. I still have five of them. Whatever. <laughs> but they all do different things, right? One's my quilty machine. One's for heavy duty. One's a serger. So it's okay. But um, sewing, uh, sewing machines, I guess, is what I still collect. What are my two favorite sewing projects? So I don't really have a favorite sewing project because the reason I like to sew and quilt is because I can make every single project different, right? I don't make two quilts the same or I don't make two projects the same, two sewing projects the same. I like to switch up everything. I do it for the creative aspect of it, meaning I'm not a mass producer, so I don't sit here. A lot of times people will ask me why I don't sell the stuff that I make. And it's just because the amount of time that you put into it, most of the times people are not willing to pay what it's really worth. Um, and I don't like to pump out the same project over and over again. It gets really repetitive and boring for me. I like every single one of my projects to be a little bit different from the one that I made previously, even if it is like a quilt. All my quilts are completely different. Um, so I just, I mean, I like quilting in general. Any quilt that I make is something that I love. Um, so I don't really have a favorite sewing project. Uh, my next question, what is your favorite sewing YouTube channel? So because I consider myself more of a quilter, um, I'll have to say my friend Margarita's YouTube channel. She has a bunch of videos up there on quilting for beginners, intermediate people, tips, tricks for different things, even like how she makes a sewing table, just using stuff that she has around the house so that she can quilt a really large quilt on her domestic sewing machine. Whenever I need to touch up on my quilting skills or, or I come across maybe a new idea or I hear of a tip or trick, I usually will go to her channel and she'll usually have a video for it. So I'll actually link to her channel right here if you wanna check her out as well. Next question is, if I had to choose, which one would I choose between a bucket full of fabric or a sewing machine? I would definitely have to go with the machine. Not that I need any more, um, but then again, I don't really need more fabric either. But I'd still go with the sewing machine. Just because I really love how there's so much variety in machines. Some weigh 10 pounds, some weigh 60, you know? Uh, they do different things. They sew different quality of weight. Some have better stitch quality on different types of fabrics. Some are for heavy duty, whether you're working with bulkier fabrics or sewing through a lot of layers. And so I just like to have a variety of machines so that uh, whatever project I'm working on, I can still get it done. So I'll definitely go with the machine on that one. Uh, number 10, if you got to meet one sewer, who would it be? So since I'm more of a quilter, I think I would have to go with what quilter would I like to meet and that would have to be Georgia Bones Deal. I came across her video tutorials, well not really video tutorials, but her TV show a few years back um, where we used to live. The cable network there used to show her her, her TV show. Um, I think like right before we moved out of that house, I kept looking for it and searching it for it on the DVR and they didn't give it anymore. So I think I might have to order like a DVD. I think they sell the DVD set of hers. She is amazing. The same way that I try to teach in my video tutorials to be like clear and concise and, and kind of try not to assume that the viewer knows too much so that pretty much anybody at any level can complete my projects. I think she does an even better job of that in her videos or in her TV show episodes because she's so clear. She's really patient. You can tell she's a, an amazing teacher. Um, I actually had a chance to pick up some of her books at an estate sale last year. And so I picked up maybe four or five of her books and they're just amazing. She, I think the show is called Lap Quilting with Georgia Bone Steel, but it's not just lap quilting. You know, she teaches different techniques and all kinds of different quilting things, different ideas and things that I've never seen before. And just her style of instruction is what really attracted me to her episodes. 
and I would definitely love to meet her. And the last question here is, does sewing run in your family? Uh, because my mom has been sewing all her life, I'll have to answer this question yes, even though nobody else in my family really sews, just my mom and I. But <laughs> it does run in my family because I grew up watching my mom on the sewing machine and she used to make all our clothes and stuff as we were kids. So I hope that I'll be able to pass along my skills to my kids. Um, even my son likes to join me in the studio and work with me on projects, so I think that's really fun. I really think sewing and quilting, you know, things like that, just hands-on crafts in general, are really important for us to pass on to our future generations, our kids and grandkids. And so uh, hopefully I'm doing my part <laughs> in passing that down in my family. And if you enjoyed my answers to the sewing tag questions, go ahead and hit this video with a thumbs up and remember to click subscribe so you won't miss out on any of my new video tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.